So this is DJI's Air 2S. It's kind of my go-to drone for something compact. And this is the Mavic 3 Cine, which is a little bit bigger, but gives me more capability. And today DJI has announced this thing, which is the M30T. Now this actually isn't designed for cinematography, even though I kind of wish it was, but it's designed for first responders, public safety, maybe accident reconstruction to open up roads faster. Basically important stuff that I honestly don't know that much about. I mean, I'm just a YouTuber but uh, DJI sponsored this video, so I still get to play with the cool shit. Now let me start off by showing you the insane zoom lens that's on here, and I happen to know somebody that's a huge, huge fan of super telephoto lenses. <gasps> what do you think that is? This is nasty, bro. <laughs> a little bit bigger than your Mavic, right? Just a little bit. There's actually this map online that will show you all these rescue missions where drones helped save people's lives. Kind of crazy stuff. Yeah, this is insane. How much do you think that's worth in your hands? I'm going to guess 15,000. I actually, honestly, I don't know, oh. but it's probably a lot. I like how you just already knew how to unfold it and everything. Can you guess how you turn it on? Yeah, I can guess. Let me try, yeah. let me try. Mm-hmm, just like your Mavic Air 2? Yeah, it's exactly the same. <laughs> Are you curious about what this thing can do? Well, I'm also curious about the controller. I'm sure the controller looks different, right? Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty familiar, huh? But uh -huh. you got more buttons because a lot of people apparently use these with gloves. It feels really rugged. Yeah, it like does. Like a little tank. Yeah, it feels really good. That beacon is bright, and there's certain times where this is a requirement, and it has to be visible from three miles away. Can Frank figure out how to take off? <laughs> Are you a little intimidated right yeah, now, flying time. something so big? big? See how this says zoom right here? Mm -hmm. You press that, and it's going to zoom in on us. Nice. Zoom in more. Oh. Yeah. No way. Well, I'll quickly switch you back to the wide angle and now you can look around and, and see that? So that, that little tiny green mm -hmm, square mm -hmm. is where you're going to zoom into. Okay, Isn't that okay. insane? Go to oh. zoom. Boom! Oh, Isn't that crazy? Nice. Don't you guys feel like we're the SWAT team like <laughs> investigating <laughs> some <laughs> shady <laughs> stuff? <laughs> yeah. See this thing on the top left right here? Yes. Hit that. A range finder. So that okay. is 869 feet away. Mm -hmm. What do you think so far? I like it. You yeah. want one? I want two. You haven't even <laughs> seen the coolest part yet. Boom. Oh, you nice. That is? Heat vision. Thermal. Thermal. Uh, IR. All right, so I'm here trying to convince Carrie that we need to buy one of these. If the dogs happen to get lost in the middle of the woods at night, how would we ever find them, Carrie? All I know is if the girls ever did get lost and you had this drone, yeah. your ass better find them. <laughs> it is kind of nice that the propellers kind of sit up a little bit so you can take off from uneven ground. Oh, check that out. Like if she was trying to hide behind a tree or something, play hide and seek with me, and then I'll just whip this out. <laughs> right now the thermal isn't as obvious because the ground is not that different from your temperature. So if I was searching for the dogs during the daytime, I'd probably just be able to just use the regular camera and the zoom. But as soon as it cools off like early morning or nighttime, then everything else is dark except for whatever is warm. So it becomes very obvious. I definitely feel like I'm in Mission Impossible, you know? Hop into the zoom right here. So that's the 20X zoom, but oh Ooh! my God. Oh, whoa. Oh crap, I got too excited. Whoa, that was cool. Like, you want to see the wide angle? Boom. Isn't that crazy? Go back, go back. That's so neat. Holy crap. Also check out this minimum focus distance with the zoom lens. Ready? And in we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's some good detail right there. Apparently they need it because they need to be able to see like the fine details of wires or fraying things or right, I don't know, like things that are not safe. Cruise. Yeah. Why don't we have a zoom lens like this? in any of our cinema stuff. We want it over here too. Inspire people are here waiting. Another feature that I thought was really cool is a mode called high res right here. So you see how this grid appears. So let's just say we need this area here, very highly detailed. What this is gonna do is take a photo with the zoom lens in each one of these boxes. So the amount of photos and the amount of time it's gonna take is gonna change based on the size of the area. Let's go with this. So this isn't gonna work on like a moving object, but this will show you a grid and then you click onto each box to get a close up look. Now there is a panoramic mode which will stitch the photo for you. And this isn't just your standard left to right panoramic photo. This is like everything below panoramic, which is really cool. So I'm gonna go have a fruit snack while we wait for this. <laughs> Actually, I'm just kidding. I don't have any fruit snacks. I really wish I did though. I could really use one right now. So check this out. Look at that. I wonder if Google Street View will ever do something like this. You know, you have the street view and then you have the air view. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do that with this thing. How many lives do you think we saved on that flight? <laughs> I don't know. Quite a few. 
I'm not trying to brag, but I'm kind of a hero. It's also nice to be able to hot swap. So instead of having to power down and reacquire GPS every time you boot back up, you can take one out at a time, put this new one in, swap out the other one. A few seconds, we are ready to go back up in the air. Now this controller lasts a really long time, but same can be done as well. See, it has an internal battery, so it stays on when you pull off the battery and put the new one in. You know how you're supposed to have insulation in your attic and behind the walls and all? Well, there's a few areas over there where we were doing work in the attic and we removed the insulation. And check that out. Can you guess with parts that don't have insulation? I'm actually shocked at how much of a difference that insulation makes. See, if I draw this box around that area, it's gonna tell me the warmest temperature and the coolest temperature. And the uninsulated parts are a solid five degrees cooler it's letting all the heat out. So there you go, insulation actually works. And as you can see, this works as an excellent stunt finder too. Oh, there's more parts of insulation missing right there. But also we can see instantly which directions the beams are running too, yeah. which is nice. Where is it, like right around here? Now there are other things that normal people like us can use it for, like check in to see how well cooked your burrito is. We are also using it to check the circulation of our hands and feet and Carrie has no circulation in her feet. Look at that, it's just completely gone. <laughs> I already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but now you really believe me. Another cool thing is let's say this is the command center and I have several of these flying around. I can access the operation from right here in the comfort of my very own room. So from here, I can see the position of the drone, where it's looking. Now the other drones do also need to be connected to Wi-Fi or a hotspot. There's also the option to completely disconnect the drone from the internet. Like if you're a secret agent and you're doing some high security stuff, it's kind of like airplane mode of the drone. But if it's more of a collaborative project and you don't need that high security, Flight Hub is awesome. I can go ahead and select a point of interest here. And on the drone's controller, we can see that it appears there and we can say, hey, look at that point and it centers it right there. And even from here, I can open up drone view and see the feed live, which is really cool and make it also bigger or smaller. Is there someone flying FPV over there? What, really? Yeah. FPV is really cool. It's like the small world where, you know, if you fly FPV and you meet somebody that flies FPV, it's like, oh, hey, we're immediately friends. They're flying right there. It's always a question of where the pilot is. You're looking for someone wearing goggles. Mr. Potato! Yo, are you flying? I am. Finally found who was flying the FPV. What's your name? My name's Earl. Earl, yeah, all right. Earl Bernard. Did you notice it was me through the goggles or no, afterwards? No, I, I didn't because I crashed over here and then I saw somebody walking towards the drone and I thought somebody was gonna grab it. Oh, oh, so it's down. you're trying to recover it right yeah, now. Yeah. Oh, we should try to get it then. This is half of what FPV is. It's just kind of going no, like, really, where really is it? to meet you, man. Yeah, I no, that's videos awesome. And stuff. Yeah. I found him. Carrie's the one that spotted you first. Oh, awesome. Because she's got the eagle eyes. <laughs> We're gonna add in the sound effect every time Carrie spots something. You fly with like the DJI digital system, I do. right? I do. But you've never flown a regular Mavic? Never. What? Never. Honestly, I couldn't tell you what this is. <laughs> How many total sensors does it have? So every side, including the top, back, sides, and there's an FPV camera right here as well, so that you can always see which direction is forward. So I'm trying to tell Carrie that we really need one of these <laughs> for when the dogs get lost. Tell you what, it looks expensive. <laughs> saving a life is priceless. See, you get that line right there, saving a line is or a, priceless. Or a dog's life. Exactly. <laughs> Carrie thinks the dog's life is more important. It can look in pretty much every direction. So as we you know, walk around it, it's oh, detecting wow. us in the distance and all that. Wow. Does it feel weird just not flying FPV and not having the goggles? Not at all. Easy, huh? Compared to what you're used to. Very easy. What's the range on something like this? Oh, you could get really far. Well, technically you need to be line of sight unless you have certain waivers. This green light means that this controller is in command of the aircraft but let's say you have multiple controllers, like I wanna be all the way over there. Okay. You could be here taking off with this and I could have my second controller go all the way over there. And he and could then, take control of it. Exactly. And you can just daisy chain it. And I guess for pipeline inspections, that's common. Like I've never had a real job, so I don't really know. Right. I just exist in a world where everything just happens to work. Like I plug in something into the wall, I have electricity all of a sudden. So right now this is the FPV mode. So you're literally just looking at what the aircraft sees, which is what you're familiar you're with, right? Your camera is locked onto the quad itself. And it also tells us our wind speeds, which is just useful information sure. to know. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our main camera right here. So you get to look around, up, down, left, right. Yeah, you get to look at the propeller. So if you're having trouble finding a specific spot, you can double tap on your thing and it'll center it 
on that object go. right there. So let's say we want to look at that smokestack right there. Now this is the fun part. Wow. Check that out. Wow, that's an amazing picture. Right? Amazing. That smokestack is over there. Is that smokestack? That's what it's called? Yeah. Again, I've never had a real job. Right now, we're recording simultaneously four feeds. So we have what you're seeing on the controller going on here. We also have the wide angle, and we also have the thermal, as well as the telephoto. So they're all recording at once. That thing just sits there. 20 mile plus winds, it would just be locked. Yeah, because its top speed is, I uh, believe, about 50, but you can fly it at winds around 30, something like that. So even if it's 30 mile per hour winds, then you still have a 50 mile per hour capability out of it. So even if you're flying it towards a headwind, you still get 20 miles per hour towards it. Yeah, the thing is just rock solid. Yeah. So I can actually change the type of IR between a couple of different looks, you know, depending on what you're trying to do and what temperatures you're trying to read. Right. And apparently there's a slight variation in actual temperature. So you have to actually take into account what material it is. And if it's metal, it might emit more. But this is actually pretty close as is. If your tolerance is for measuring the temperature is exact, then there's like post-processing software you can run it through. And if you're looking for something in particular, mm -hmm. like a fire or something like that, you can basically say, hey, let me know if you see anything at this temperature and it'll beep at you. Amazing. So what's the voltage on it now? You look at voltages for your FPVs, but this just kind of gives you this timer up top, like about 16 minutes, 34 seconds. It's definitely easier flying this than your FPV drones. You don't have to know how many volts per cell you should be tracking and right. all that stuff. Before they, it drops out of the sky when you yeah, run too low. Yeah, exactly. Flight time on something like this? Looking at 40 minute flight time, 37 minute hover time. So if you're flying the drone, uh, you actually can elongate the battery life versus a hover. Removable antennas, so if you wanted to run uh, your antennas to the top of a roof of a command vehicle or command center, you could. And then the drone itself has an IP55 rating. If you have rain in the forecast, you know, like you said, usually like, oh, we'll move the shoot to tomorrow. Obviously, if someone's lost, you can't necessarily move the search to the next day. So the drone has the IP55 rating, which protects it from dust and other debris, but it also includes water. IP54 rating as well, so our first remote controller with a weather rating as well. Sam, have you ever seen a thermal camera before? Only in the movies. Okay, would you be down to run in a field? Pretend you're lost. <laughs> Gene, I'm always <laughs> lost. <laughs> so different departments, depending on their needs, might get different attachments. And yeah. Yeah, so some are using spotlights a lot, some might use speakers a lot. I think we'll even have a spotlight speaker combo. You know, oh, that's the one I want. Two for one sale. Some people in search and rescue communicate uh, with the victim. Would the microphone be on the controller? Yeah, you'd be able to, to speak into the controller. But. That is so cool. I've <laughs> always wanted to just be able to fly up to people and talk to them. You got to check out the zoom on this thing. Yeah, but so that green box is showing what we're looking at. Uh -huh and then switch over to zoom camera. Oh snap, this would be a great home security system. Dude. That's for sure. You could check if the taco man is there. <laughs> Say hi, Jose. <laughs> uh, well, that's why you gotta get the speaker. If there was a certain location, maybe this pole is falling down in a storm or we're on a search and rescue mention and it's a point of interest that we wanna come back and look at, drop a pin with this pin button and then you'll see it actually appears on the, the screen there. So you're essentially dropping a GPS point with a height and saying, I want to look at that later. We could move the, the camera around, look at something else, and then you say, hey, I want to look at that pin again. So it brings you back oh, to the pin you dropped so on the screen. Cool. Awesome. I think in that lunch table right now, we could cook eggs on it if we wanted to. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a burger, a fried egg. But anyways, we have to go and return the drone back to DJI now, but uh, what do you think? Are we gonna get ourselves one? <laughs> Uh, I think we need to remodel the bathrooms first and then maybe we can talk about it. Okay, that. that's fair. It's funny because there's a story that actually popped up on Carrie's feed where a dog got rescued by a drone, right? Yeah, just a few days ago, the dog got lost, I think, while they were hiking and they were able to find it using a drone. But that is all. Thanks for hanging out with us in another video and we will see you guys <laughs> later in Tag Time What? Stranded dog lured to safety by sausage dangling from a drone. Oh my, are you serious? <laughs> No, really? Yeah, that's a different story than the one I was telling you. So the drones are out there saving lives. Dog lives. Doggy lives.